Welcome, everyone, to the, I guess, uh, first inaugural uh, CPE uh, session delivered uh, remotely. Um, Mike and I are sitting in the new multimedia room here at 1800 Grant, and we're very pleased that you've joined us today uh, to uh, take a look at and, and learn about Slack and Trello. And um, in this session titled Slack Trello, a collaborative dream team. Uh, hopefully at this point, uh, the organizers there, your facilitators on campuses have already talked to you about uh, signing in at, on the sign-in sheet. And hopefully they've given you instructions on where the restroom is because uh, Mike and I have absolutely no idea uh, what your rooms look like and or, nor where the restrooms are. Um, if they haven't done that, um, hopefully they could do that now while uh, we take care of a couple of um, business items here. First of all, uh, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, the gentleman to my left, um, uh, Mike Edwards, who will be presenting today. Uh, Mike is a multimedia designer and developer at the Office of University Controller here at 1800 Grant. Uh, his background is in e-learning and faculty training, and uh, recently he's been very focused on creative media, uh, doing a lot of animation work, uh, illustration, infographic work, and then straight up uh, video work. Uh, you may have seen some of his work uh, recently with the Elevate Project, so um, it's highly likely if you saw any animation work done uh, with uh, the upgrade to Finn, um, you would have seen his work. Uh, he's done work for Ecom. So if you're a participant in that project, he's done work there. And most recently, uh, he put together the video instructions for open enrollment. Uh, we collaborated with employee services. And so um, if you are getting ready to enroll in benefits, you will likely hear Mike's voice and see his work on giving you instructions on how to enroll. And I have the pleasure of introducing to my right, Travis Chalemi. Um, he's a very smart and talented man. He's also my boss. So um, <laughs> he has to say that. <laughs> um, Travis is our strategic communications manager. And, uh, you know, he, he helps us plan and strategize. You know, we're posting blogs, we're putting newsletters together, we're organizing all these video projects. And um, he really has that bird's eye view of like, how do you manage all this and really think about it? Um, strategically. And so um, he's really very good at that um, with our website too. Wonderful. So we're going to kick things off um, with sort of a, a rhetorical question. And um, so I'm going to turn it over to Mike. He's going to walk you through this uh, portion of the presentation. So yeah, um, you know, rhetorical question. Have you ever worked collaboratively as part of a team? And you know, this is, should be nigh unanimous. There may be a few weird eggs out there that are like, I go in my cave and I only work alone. But most of us have to work with colleagues. Um, sometimes it's get to work, sometimes it's have to work. But either way, you're working with other people. And uh, there's kind of this, this cheesy stock image of what that's supposed to be like. Everyone's ha ha, collaboration, this is great, we're all working together. Um, but that's not exactly how it works in practice. In practice, it might look a little more like this. And we kind of have a little scenario to kind of walk through, um, you know, the, how hairy collaboration can actually be using technology. And so let's, let's start off our little story here. So let's say I need to make a thingamajig. This might be a newsletter. I might have to make a video, just whatever it is, you know, whatever makes sense for your situation. A need comes up. It needs to be made. I make it, you know, I, I build my draft. I put all the charts in. I put all the graphics, whatever it is you're making. And I'm like, woohoo, this thing is awesome. Um, well, now I need to send it to my boss, which happens to be Travis. So I'll send it over to him and be like, all right, I made my thing. And you're like, are we done? And it uh, turns out that's not the end of it. But I'll email it to Travis, and then he takes it from there. So we all know email is the best way to do everything. And we're... Uh, my tongue is firmly planted in my cheek uh, when I say that. Um, but Mike sends it to me, and I look at uh, this thingamajig, and I realize, you know what, there's other people that need to be involved with this. Uh, this uh, needs to be vetted. It needs to be put perhaps in front of a committee of people. Maybe those people exist across um, uh, various campuses. And so what we're going to do is go ahead and come up with a very short checklist of tasks 
uh, related to the project. And then we're going to write another email and send this out to a collection of people, maybe a couple dozen people, explaining what's going on, what we need to do. And I might have to schedule a couple of face-to-face -face meetings to make sure everybody is on the same page. So uh, in looking at this thingamajig, I determined, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put this into SharePoint because uh, I know Normandy and Lisa are going to want to weigh in on this and, and, and modify uh, this document. Uh, so I put it into SharePoint, but you know what, sometimes there's some struggles with when we put things into SharePoint, where is it? Uh, how do I get to it? I have to check it in. I have to check it out. And, and so rather than having them... Uh, uh, be frustrated by finding things in SharePoint, I'm going to go ahead and email it to them uh, as a file attachment. And we've all done that before, right? And so I'm going to send it to them and they start working on it. Uh, the, the problem is, is that there's been about 14 people who have logged into SharePoint and downloaded the file. And they're all uh, making their own changes, adding their own ideas to this. And rather than working in a collaborative environment, they're all working on their own copies of this. And so when I talked to the teams and told them that I needed their input, uh, they've all added their input to their own version of this, and they're going to send them all to Mike. And then I get the, the unenviable task of editing all 14 versions together. Has anyone ever experienced this where it's like, all right, I got feedback from 15 people. Now I need to open up all these documents and figure out what all the changes are. Or, you know, maybe just as bad, even using track changes in Word, that can still be a crazy hairy mess of so many different things in your face at once. And so, I, you know, I spend an entire day trying to compile these changes and uh, pulling it all together, you know, late, you know, some feedback comes in later, some comes in sooner. And uh, once I'm done with that, I email everyone again. Maybe I put it in SharePoint, but just to make sure they know where it is, I also email it. And, uh, you know, this is the really final, final, super final two dot doc that uh, we, we finally end up with. And, uh, and then what happens from there? Well... Unfortunately, Lisa's been pulled off of the project at this point. There's some other things that she has to work on, and Tim is going to be filling in. So to get Tim caught up with everything that's been going on, uh, Lisa decides, I'm going to forward all of the email correspondence that's taken place on this project over to Tim. So Tim can now look at this uh, 219 emails and try to determine what's taken place when, who said what when, what files were at which version when, and realize, you know, this is just overwhelming. So let's set up some more face-to-face -face meetings. So while Tim is getting caught up on uh, uh, everything that's taken place up to this point, uh, we find out that elsewhere in another department, somebody else is working on another thingamajig. Uh, this is your classic left hand, not knowing what the right hand is doing. And just like that, the entire project has been redefined. So we have a poll question here. How many of you have experienced at least part of this story trying to get something done that involves several people? So just by show of hands, and our, our organizers will sort of do a rough count and let us know in the room how many people. So Adam's room, everyone. We got about 13 in Boulder and uh, about 15 at, uh, at Lisa's location. So some common experience here with the, uh, you know, it's like at the outset, it was just, hey, let's work together. But before you know it, you've got a million emails, a million meetings, all this coordination that just costs things. So let's let's kind of take a step back and digest this story a bit. And what are we saying? What are we not saying? So what we're not saying is email is bad. I actually think email is an amazing tool. I, I like email. I know we, we don't necessarily like how an organization uses email all the time, but as a, a tool itself, it's a great tool. But what we are saying is that the way we communicate, the way we collaborate has costs especially the more people you want involved, especially the more uh, kinds of things you're doing, sharing files, tracking progress on something. It turns out email isn't amazing at everything. It's just good for some things. Um, and so that's, you know, today we're talking about Slack and Trello and that context we want to give you guys is that right now a lot of places default to email for literally everything, small, tiny conversations about small details, 
big organization wide emails, everything is in your inbox. And uh, it turns out by picking and choosing the kinds of places you have these conversations can really help a team have coherence. And look, you know, even though this session is called, uh, you know, it's dealing with Slack and Trello, you know, Mike and I don't own stock in Slack or Trello unless Mike made a purchase over the weekend that I was unaware of. Uh, you know, we looked at a lot of options and we've used a, a lot of options. Uh, we, we looked at Basecamp for a very long time. We used CoSchedule. We've used SharePoint and other Microsoft tools, Dropbox, Skype. And for one reason or another, uh, they just there was one or two things that where they fell short. Either it was a cost related issue, maybe it wasn't Mac friendly, maybe it was uh, didn't work across uh, mobile devices, and so we've settled in on, on on these two tools. But there are a lot of others, and as you'll hear as we go through this, you know, a lot of what we're talking about today is a, is a shift in thinking, and not so much hey you must use Slack. It's just hey there's better tools to do communications uh, with your team. I also wanted to mention that there are policies to follow. There's local campus and uh, system-wide policies related to uh, CU data and security and retention of records, those sort of things. So on your handout, there's a URL. Um, and on that URL, you will find a link to um, the, uh, uh, an APS talking about record retention and those sort of things. So wanted to sort of start this off as part of this disclaimer that the, the information that we use and, and communicate with in Trello and Slack is temporary information. We like to think of it as notes that we've scribbled down in a meeting and we're sharing back and forth. This is not a permanent repository for anything. In fact, uh, with, with some of these tools, they're very temporary in nature. And so we just wanted to kind of set that uh, off from the get-go is that, that these are uh, – uh, very temporary uh, tools and that you should talk to your local departments as far as uh, whether or not um, uh, you should be using these for the, the scope of work that you're doing. Yeah, I wouldn't be storing student data or patient data in these systems. This is really for the coherence of your team to strategize and to coordinate, not for storing sensitive stuff. So without further ado, let's actually get into Slack. And so we have kind of this poll question to start us off. Um, are any of you using some sort of chat on a daily basis for work? I know a lot of us use, you know, text messages with our families, but, um, you know, just by a raise of hands again in your room and the organizers can count it up. Um, are you using Skype or a Microsoft tool or Google chat or any of these uh, chat tools uh, for your work? And again, that you know, oftentimes these things just sort of arise by uh, people using them in the in their family settings or their personal settings, and they sort of say, "Why can't we use these things at work?" So I know there's some homegrown things that are being used out there. Um, so today we're going to talk about Slack as a kind of chat, but it's actually a little different than some of the chat tools you might have seen before. So here's their nice little, you know, uh, uh, a logo, and. Uh, what is Slack? So Slack kind of talks about themselves as being team communication for the 21st century. And that's a bold, you know, Apple marketing kind of claim. But um, what that means in practice is um, you're used to most chat being one to one, like it's me and one other person. And if I need if I'm talking to Travis and then I need to talk to Normandy, I have to repeat myself or go to Normandy's chat box and actually loop her in. Uh, Slack is based on channels and these channels are visible to the whole team. And you can still do private channels or do direct messages when you need to kind of step aside with someone specifically. But um, the, the kind of the foundation is this chat room concept for your team. You can also very easily drag and drop to share files. So instead of like, well, I know we're chatting in this chat tool, but I'm going to email you and you'll see it later or um, kind of, you know, bifurcating that. Um, you can just literally drag a file into Slack and now anyone that's part of that channel can see it. And we'll, we'll get into that more. Um, Slack is also web and mobile friendly from the ground up. So it's not just sort of ham fisted into having a, a crappy app after the fact. It's, you know, from the outset, this is a usable system on anything. Uh, any You can use it just in a browser, you can install an app on your computer, you can download the app to your phone or, or tablet. And uh, we really value that because I don't have to worry about what the other person is using. I know I can talk to them. 
So we have this scenario. Um, don't worry about trying to squint and read this. This is just to sh kind of show you a picture of what a conversation in Slack looks like. And it's not, you know, it's not terribly exciting at first glance. It's like, oh, people are writing text messages back and forth. But um, just sort of talking in terms of our team and how work gets done. So in this scenario, Adam, one of our help desk workers, is stumped by a question that came in either by email or by phone. And uh, he's able to post in Slack uh, to a Slack channel and ask this question. It's about, you know, an expense that was made to a, a, for some gas for travel. And, uh, he, you know, they're not sure how to handle it in the system, how the interface works. And the, the thing to note here is Adam didn't have to think about who he was sending this question to. He finds the help desk channel and poses his question. And then whoever's working that day, whoever's available, can see it and hop on and start answering immediately. So we see Brian was able to reply and start helping him troubleshoot. And then they can go back and forth a bit. And then later in the day, Leslie, the help desk manager, can kind of chime in and provide context or you know, sort of an overview of what's going on here. And uh, the thing that Adam didn't have to do was think hard about who is getting this message. And if, you know, maybe he emails Brian first if he weren't using Slack. And then maybe Brian's like, oh, I'm out today. Sorry, I can't help. Or, you know, maybe he's not looking at his email or, um, you know, email is not it's not as easy to quickly decide what you're looking at because every message is kind of equal priority. Um, this way, whoever's there can chime in. And as the previous slide shows, is this is since this is mobile friendly, regardless of where Leslie is or Brian is or Adam is physically, if they're at their desktop, if they're on a laptop, if they happen to be on their iPad uh, doing back, back channel communications during a meeting, not that we would ever do anything like that, but they're able to respond and see th what, what's happening synchronously across all of these devices. And, you know, let's say Leslie was going to start writing an answer, but she can see in Slack that Brian is typing. So if it's a really simple question, you don't get five answers like over email where it's like you don't know that someone else is crafting a response. In Slack, you have that coherency because you can tell. So we also want to do a live demo. I'm going to turn it over to Travis, and we're going to actually show you it in action. Um, we like to show the screenshot first to talk through, but now let's actually look at Slack. So in this scenario, um, we collaborate on video projects a lot here in FPBS. And uh, one of the things that happens often is I need to share uh, drafts of videos that I'm working on. So one thing I can do is I'm going to, you're going to see the notification pop up, but I'm going to write Travis and say, here is the latest draft. And I can paste a link and it pops up. And now he's able to play this from inside Slack and then, um, we can have a conversation about this video, and uh, it kind of facilitates that. So I'm able to see the video. It's embedded right into here. Um, a lot of the contextual information comes with this. I know when he posted it. Uh, I know who posted it. I have the link here. I can watch the video uh, right into here. And then I can I can then provide some feedback to him here directly. Um, there's an audio glitch at one minute and 43 seconds. And now if Normandy or Lisa watches this video, they also notice the glitch. They come here and they go, oh, Travis already got it. I don't have to write Mike and tell him there was an audio glitch uh, in a separate email. Um, or you know, deal with a, a backlog of emails with all the replies separated by signatures and trying to see what's already been said. Um, it's very transparent here. And uh, since we're just talking to each other as a team, this is a good format. So I can I can thank Travis and say thanks. I'll fix that. Um, also wondering if Normandy or Lisa have comments. And she'll you'll notice um, when you see this message pop up, uh, there's these at replies you can do. And so you can mention people and they get notified. It's sort of like if you're familiar with Twitter, you can at mention people. Um, that way I'm specifically calling them out. So even if they're not really tuned into the media channel, like they don't normally have to be involved much. Um, if I really need their feedback, I can do this at message and that way they get a notification on their computer or their phone saying, Hey, Mike has specifically mentioned you. And that, that kind of helps pull people into the conversation. So you could see here, I saw briefly that Lisa looked as though she was uh, typing a, re a reply to this. 
Adam's also typing a reply to this. So you can see as this discussion is unfolding, I can tell other people are about to weigh in. So I'll ask them to go ahead and submit those. Adam says, hello. Adam's not offering very much constructive um, conversation to what we're talking about. Um, but no, this is just a, a great example of how all of this is happening synchronously across all of these devices. We have everything time stamped here. Uh, the links that are dropped in are, are put into a format that's just usable. And this whole channel we're on, you can see it highlighted in sort of a teal color on the left-hand side. It's the media channel. So we, we aren't clogging this up with every topic and every conversation. This is our little space for video conversations. So real quickly, I'll show you. If I drop into the Fall Town Hall channel, you can see that we have some things going on here in the Fall Town Hall channel. Mike, what are these ridiculous things? So you see these little animated GIFs, which may not translate well over the webinar, but um, with Slack, as you saw with the video and here with GIFs, it's very media smart. So if you're sharing any sort of image or graphic, it's not just an attachment that someone has to download and then open in a separate app. It's all very in line and sort of part of the conversation. So we hear Travis is, is uh, saying thank you. And so that's this thing called Giphy. It's built into Slack. And we're seeing this on, on all kinds of social sharing stuff. Um, so those, that's sort of our some of our scenarios with using Slack. We want to uh, step back for a second and have a discussion. We're going to give you guys a couple minutes to talk amongst yourselves in the room. And uh, your organizers will sort of collect answers and summarize them for us, and then we'll kind of come back together. We'll give you guys probably about two minutes. Um, so the question is, how could a team chat tool like Slack help your office? And just think about the, the collaboration, the, the way that the seamless conversation might help. Also at this time, if there are, because we actually have a couple uh, extra minutes, more than two, if you have any questions that have come up, uh, we, we'll do our best to answer them through this uh, medium, through GoToMeeting. Uh, however, uh, most of them are likely to be answered uh, as follow-up to this. Uh, we will be following up uh, via email. Uh, but be uh, sure to pose those questions to your local organizer, and they'll uh, drop them into the chat. So again, we'll give you a couple minutes here, and we'll be quiet on the mic. All right, uh, we see Normandy's room is, uh, have a, had a lot of great ideas. Uh, while I give the other organizers a chance to comment, I'm gonna, we're going to talk about some of hers. Um, she mentioned scheduling meetings and possibly avoiding some meetings entirely. We've actually found that as our team, that there are some things that don't require meetings. You, this may be a wild idea in this modern age. Um, sometimes you just need to answer a few questions, and Slack can do that without having to take calendar time up for everyone. Um, there's also all sorts of event planning stuff that people are mentioning, construction projects, student employees that don't check their email often. They may be more uh, excited to use a synchronous tool. Um, Lisa is also noticing a question, uh, record retention. How long do files stay available in Slack? Um, the free version of Slack keeps 10,000 of your most recent messages, but you're able to delete them. If you want to delete something, you can go straight in and delete it. Um, the paid version of Slack, which we're not going to go into all the nitty gritties of the different versions, um, you can very, very custom, you can customize that very deeply. You can have channels that auto delete themselves. You can, um, if you need to manage the record retention, Slack is, has tools for that. Um, so it's worth looking into. But, uh, but I'm going to repeat the earlier disclaimer. Slack is not a file repository. Uh, I think Normandy says it best when she says it's like a conversation. You have a conversation with someone. You talk through some processes. Maybe it's a group conversation. Uh, you have some scribbles in your in some notes. You may share a file back and forth, but it is not a permanent place to keep anything. In fact, Mike and I often say if every single thing got deleted in Slack tomorrow, it should not impact greatly our business. Uh, meaning, if you if you have a discussion in Slack and you come to some um, some decisions, someone needs to be documenting those in a permanent system um, because Slack is, <clears throat> and, and Trello as well, they are for temporary uh, getting uh, work done sort of uh, use cases. 
Um, there's also a question here about Outlook integration. Uh, Slack has notifications built in, including email notifications. So you can customize it very deeply there. You can have some channels, like maybe the media channel we talked about. Maybe I want to be emailed every time someone posts there, or, you know, have a, a daily digest or some kind of summary. Um, you can do these sorts of things um, where you customize your notifications. Um, the mobile apps will notify you with your phone's built-in notifications. There, there's all sorts of options there. Um, I also want to comment, Lisa brought up that uh, UCCS has found that with implementing Slack, some people are resistant. Um, this is a common story with IT. Anytime you want to introduce a new app or a new way of doing things, there's always a, a cultural aspect. And we're going to get into that more deeply later, but uh, I'm not surprised. Um, anytime, you know, even if you went and said, now everything's in email or now everything's in Slack, um, trying to do proclamations like that is always kind of risky. And it's really, um, we think of Slack and Trello not just as lists of features, but as part of us thinking through how we work together and what's the best way to do it. So let's, let's uh, move on to our um, Slack summary slide. We will, there were some other questions and we'll definitely follow up after the webinar with anything we didn't have time to answer. Um, but we kind of want to take a step back and talk about some lessons learned about our use of Slack. And first off, we're using the free version, and it's actually pretty generous for a, a small team. If you were, you know, if you were a huge team, you know, 50, 100 people, you might find the free version to be kind of limiting. But uh, for a smaller team, it's great. Um, we love that it works in a browser. It works on Windows and Mac, it works on our phones. Um, not everyone has to install it everywhere, but we like that we have that choice. Um, as I said, we decide what's relevant to us at that time. This is the notifications thing. So um, if we go to the next slide, we can see um, an example of, so here I'm on the newsletter channel and you can see desktop, mobile, uh, channel notification. You can mute channels. If there's a channel where you just want to look in every few days or so, but you don't want it constantly bouncing in front of you saying, hey, I've got new stuff, you can very deeply customize this so that you know what's going on the way you prefer. I kind of think this is similar to when you get email from Outlook. We're all familiar with that bubble that shows up in the bottom right corner of the screen. And wouldn't it be great to say only show that bubble when people are talking about this thing that's on fire or it's from this very important person. But unfortunately, it, it, your inbox is sort of flat where Slack gives you that ability to say, hey, you know what? I only want to know about things related to the newsletter in these formats, on these devices and at these times. Uh, some other sort of things we've discovered in using Slack. Our emails got better. Um, we still use email. Email is still a valuable tool. And it turns out that a lot of our small inter-team conversations were much better suited to a chat tool. And then the times where we did need to email, um, those were more focused. They, we got to make sure those were as good as they could be. And there's just less noise in our inboxes. So when I get an email from my, you know, Travis or Normandy, um, it stands out because it's not just a <laughs> little side comment or, you know, um, something that's, you know, some newsletter, um, it's actually important. And this, this last point here, back or this next to last point, uh, this back channel to life as a team. So even when we're in meetings, even let's say uh, I've attended conferences with my team um, using Slack. And uh, it's amazing that as we're all going to different sessions or involved in different things, Slack is kind of that backbone that sort of keeps us connected. Hey, where are we eating? Hey, is that session good? I was thinking about going to this one. All these things. Um, I'm taking notes in this doc. Check it out. Um, Slack kind of was that glue. So that's sort of our, our little spiel on Slack. And we're going to transition over to Trello. But I did want to say we do have a handout you have in your hands. And that's on that handout is a link to a web page, which is going to have you know all the sort of housekeeping stuff. How much does Slack cost? Is there a free version? How do I set it up? How do I use it? Where is the app? All those kinds of questions. Um, we have links to guides to, to sort of take care of that if you're interested. So as we go into Trello, we want to start with another poll question. And uh, this is, you know, sort of open-ended. Do you feel as though you need help managing your tasks? And this can be sort of a show of hands. Um, whatever your work is, tracking a project, 
um, making sure you dot all the I's and cross all your T's. Um, do you need help? And these can be tasks that are yours. They can be tasks that are part of your team or are across an entire organization or campus. So it seems like pretty unanimously, yes, of course. And maybe this borders on being rhetorical, but um, we're going to talk. You never know. <laughs> yeah. So Travis is going to take us through Trello, which is might kind of, if you've never seen it, is kind of amazing for dealing with this. I think it's funny. Mike said dealing with this, and I think it's a carefully uh, chosen uh, phrase because dealing with tasks is just that. It's something you have to deal with. We don't want to let things fall through the cracks. Um, if you're anything like me, the things that tend to fall through the cracks end up, um, you know, maybe nipping you in the rear end moving forward because there's, you know, we're all doing more with less and I could, you know, put a bunch of other cliche statements in here. But um, many of us in, in, in talking with colleagues are still using sort of these 20th, 20th century means to, um, uh, to, to manage what they're doing here in the 21st century. And so when we looked at task management, one of the things we really liked about Trello, it was a great sort of bridge from the um, 20th century way of thinking, but applying some technology to that. So if you think of Trello um, as a, a pile of post-it notes, right? And so there's a lot of different seminars you can attend on how to stay organized and how to stay on top of things and prioritize uh, things for you and prioritize things for your team. Um, and so uh, one of the uh, ways to do that is very common is this post-it note sort of uh, way of doing things. The problem with this is these post-it notes exist in someone's office or in a team room or something. And, and um, there, so there's absolutely no remote access to this. And um, and uh, it's handwritten, it's not searchable. So great concept, however, uh, we, we think we can do better with applying some 21st century tech to this. And so that's really what Trello does, is if you think about it, you've got the 20th century um, you know, post-it note approach here, which works really good, but then Trello comes in and says, hey, let's take that concept apply technology to it so that we can work across multiple devices, multiple campuses, synchronously, asynchronously, however uh, works best for what it is that you're doing. So there's the side-by-side -side comparison there. Um, here's what uh, Trello looks like um, in, in the middle of being used. And so you can see here we have columns um, uh, for each one of these. This is a board. So this whole thing you're looking at is a board. This happens to be the uh, Elevate board. I'm going to get my cursor up here. The Elevate board. So these are things that we have to do uh, related to the Elevate project. And you can see Normandy has a bunch of stuff. This was this was taken some time back. Travis has some stuff to do. And um, and so those each one of these cards here, you can imagine being a Post-it note, a sticky note. Um, and so uh, I'm going to give you a couple more screenshots here. Well, what does it look like when we actually create one of these cards or post-it notes? Um, you can see here, this is the interface for adding a card. Okay, so you put some information up here at the top, um, which is, you know, the, the title of it, uh, which list it is in. This is in my to-do list. Um, members here, uh, these are the people that as things happen on this card, these are the people that will receive notifications. Very much in line with what Slack is doing, um, Trello has a lot of notification controls. And so when I add people to this card and, uh, and things take place here, they will receive notifications uh, based on their preferences. Some people like to have everything in their email. Wonderful, it will do that. Some people want to receive a desktop notification. Wonderful, it will do that. Others want their notifications sent over to Slack. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about these two working together. And wonderful, it will do that. Uh, you get when this card was updated. So you have some relevant information up there at the top. Over here on the right is basically the control panel for this card. This is where I add members. You can label things. You can add checklists to a card. So if you have a five-step process, we can add a checklist, and I'll demo that here in a minute. You can assign a due date to this. When you assign a due date 
Trello is going to do some wonderful things for you. It's going to send you some reminders. Hey, this is coming up due pretty soon. You might want to take a look at this. Um, you, you, it will tell you, uh, hey, this is overdue, and it will do things like change the colors of the card and, and those sort of things. So it's really helping you to get your tasks done. You can apply, <clears throat> excuse me, you can um, add attachments to this card, and we'll walk through that process as well. Then there's actions for each card um, where you can move this. And so when I'm done with uh, a portion of the of this card, I can then move it to Mike's to-do list because he has something he needs to do with it. Um, and so in those handout or in that handout, there's a, a link to the website and on there are a bunch of videos and training materials on the specifics of these. But I wanted to kind of give you an overview of what happens on, on a card uh, there with these uh, buttons on the right. And then down here, you can see this is the, an ongoing conversation related to this card. Now, normally what happens is um, people immediately say, well, I thought we were using Slack uh, when we talk about things. Um, yes and no. I consider these comments to be um, more along the lines of, hey, I'm done with this you know, notify Heather, let her know so she can take a look at it or, or whatnot. The, this discussion and this activity that shows up down below, it stays with this card. And so it's wonderful that when I take this card and I pass it along to Mike, he looks at the card and he gets to take a look at everything that's happened in relation uh, to this particular card. Or, or to this particular task. So it's great for um, not forcing everyone to pay attention to everything at the same time, being able to loop them in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I'm making a video and we, we have a, a third party, someone outside of our team that is going to look and let us know if the content is good, you know, I can note in this card, hey, I sent it over to that person to get their feedback. And as soon as they come back, um, I'll finalize the video. And that way everyone knows like, hey, how come that video is not done? They can come and see oh, Mike said he was waiting on feedback from this person. And uh, instead of always having to ask, what's, you know, what's the status of this thing? Um, you can embed that status over time on the card and it just kind of becomes a history of what's happened. You know, like most modern uh, web tools, uh, just as Slack did, you know, when Mike puts in a YouTube link, it automatically knows I'm gonna embed the video into this link. So I can watch this video from the card. Uh, that's the same thing if he attaches a Word doc or an Excel file or a PDF file, I'm going to get a chance to preview that here rather than having to download the file, open it up with Microsoft Word. I can real quickly pull that up and just look and say, okay, this is, um, you know, I can read it. Uh, maybe I don't need to interact with it. Maybe I just need to read it. It's all at a fingertip. And again, all of this is working on tablet. All of this is working on, on um, your phones, uh, so there's really this publish in one place, uh, manage your task in one place, and it moves uh, to a variety of different places. Another thing I really like, and so um, w one thing to mention, we're using this as, as a task management, right? Um, but you'll notice there's not a lot of rules for this. Um, and so you can use this as to-do lists or not. We have some Trello boards that are just brainstorms or uh, Mike and I have one where it's, I say, hey, this is a really cool video technique and I just throw it up as a card in the really cool video it's technique. Almost board. like Pinterest in a way, if you use it that way. And so we're, we're able to have little comments there. Hey, this is cool. We should use that on this project. And it's, and it's documented somewhere. Again, is it a records retention sort of thing? No, it's just I want this to be there if I want to refer to it at some point, and it's easy for me to search for that uh, rather than I've written it down in a notebook somewhere sitting on a shelf. And so uh, it's a great tool for that. Now, as you build these cards up, you can see, you know, there is a lot of stuff going on back here. And one of the things that's nice about Trello is it gives you this great calendar interface. And so as I'm adding a card, and I say, hey, this task needs to get done. Uh, on the Elevate project, I can quickly see these Thursdays may not be the best days for me to drop something in. There's 17 cards on Thursday, April 21st. So that might not be the best day to start adding stuff on when on the 25th, we don't have anything that's due. 
And so uh, it just gives you sort of this global view of, okay, what's going on in relationship to this project? Now, I'm going to give a, a quick disclaimer for Trello. It is not a project management tool on the um, of the same ilk as Microsoft Project or something along those lines, okay? Uh, there's no effort reporting. Um, there's no uh, Gantt charts, those sort of things. And so if that's what you're looking for, this isn't the tool for you. Mike and I really feel like this is a great tool for sort of the lay person to manage some tasks, share those tasks with a group of people, make sure things don't fall through the cracks, and there you go, and, and, and keeping it as simple as possible. So we're going to dive into a live demo here and actually walk you through the life of a card, kind of. So hopefully everyone can see this is our live Trello board here in Elevate. Hopefully everyone can see uh, what's going on here. So we're going to walk through a scenario similar to what we did with Slack. Uh, let's pretend I'm Lisa. Hello, I'm Lisa. And I'm going to create a, 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 a card in here, um, and I need to assign it to Travis's uh, to-do list because I, I just finished working on this um, script, and I need to make sure that uh, uh, he, he knows uh, to take a look at it. So I'm going to click on Add a Card here. I'm going to say maybe this card is, you know, record a video for open enrollment. And I'm using open enrollment as an example because it's a project we just recently finished and I happen to have the script handy here. I'm going to add that card here. And then after I've added the title, I'm going to edit this card. Sorry. Oh, don't use the pencil. Just click on the text. There, clicking on place. So we can see this um, Card has been opened up. So the first thing I've done is I've, I've already added the title. I'm going to come in here and put a description. Okay, and then we'll say, you know what, we're going to add a couple people to this. Uh, you know, Heather needs to know about this. Mike needs to know and Normandy need to know uh, what's happening with, with recording this video for an open enrollment. Um, let's add a, go ahead and add a checklist to this. And we're going to say, you know, um, we're going to have the script, um, is written. Let's say, um, after that, we're going to do some screen captures. We're going to record some audio. Uh, we're going to post it to YouTube. And we might have some other items that we have in here. Um, but uh, so I've got this checklist assigned here and uh, we're going to say, well, I've already written the script, um, but I need to go ahead and attach that script to here. So let's go grab the URL for the script. So we've been writing this script here in Google Docs. I can grab the URL for that. Um, and say here is the script. Let me paste that in there, send that message along, creates the hyperlink down here in the activity. You can see the activity is building up. Everything is time stamped. Um, pretend that this says Lisa instead of Travis, of course. Um, so I've added this script here. Now, Mike, um, since he's added as a notification, he already knows that I've done work on this. So his notifications are kicking off right off the bat. Oh, Look, Mike has already responded and says, hey, looks good. Hey, Normandy, have you had a chance to look at this yet? So I'm going to say, you know, the script is written. Um, and Lisa's done with this. She's going to go ahead and move this over to Mike's pile. So we're going to put this on Mike's to-do list because um, this needs to go to him. And he really needs to get those screen captures done by Friday. So let's go ahead and attach that on there. Again, you see the activity down here showing the... This task was completed, a due date was assigned. So this now is in Mike's to-do pile. Record video for an open enrollment. You can see here that it's due April 29th. You can see here that two of the tasks are done. Apparently Mike's already done. So let's see what happened. Oh, it looks like Mike checked off screen captures, completed the screen captures on this card. Okay, great. And it appears as though it's still in his to-do pile. So I'm going to say, you know what, if he's done with that, he still has to record audio. Uh, and so we'll just leave that in his to-do pile. So that's essentially um, the, the dialogue of, of what happens with uh, creating a card. Comments live in the, uh, with the card forever. And then as Mike goes through and checks these other items off, um, I might put a comment in here that says, this is all done. 
good job. I'm going to save that comment, and then I'm going to archive this card. We're done with it. Let's go ahead and archive that card. It's it's no longer in the flow of things here. That project has been done, and it's archived. Now, let's pretend for a moment, though, that we say, oh, goodness, uh, what was that one thing that we did? It had to do something with open enrollment. Trello and Slack both have incredible search tools. And so I'm going to come in here and type in open enroll. And it's going to search through here and you can see it's pulling up all of the cards that are related to open enrollment and uh, this one is right here is uh, in the archive so i'm going to open this up it's telling you this card is archived but i can see everything that took place when things were done um, and we have this wonderful little paper trail in case we have to re come back and determine how you know what didn't get done or how can we pick this up to finish this and zero emails, unless you want email. I mean, you can get notified by email if you want to, but it's a choice now, and you can do your collaboration through this tool, which is built for this. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to pop back uh, to a discussion question. And uh, again, with that notion that, uh, you know, we're using it to manage tasks as a team, but that there's enough, uh, there are aren't very many rules to this. What are some other things you could manage with Trello other than tasks or team tasks? And again, we'll give you about two minutes to discuss in your room and your organizers can sort of collect uh, the common answers and let us know. Um, so yeah, about two minutes. All right, we're going to bring it back together. We've already had a, a comment or two here. Uh, Lisa's room uh, mentioned weekly depart departmental meetings uh, to create and post meeting minutes. And we were just thinking about that. Um, a lot of meetings end up with action items. And, you know, instead of just writing on a notepad and then losing that notepad or forgetting to email people later, put it in Trello. You know, and it, what's interesting about Trello is it really gives this uh, – uh, uh, transparency to what's going on, not just the big picture, but also just when seeing this particular thing is bogging down, what's happening. We have a decision here that nobody's made. Okay, let's circle the wagons. Let's get and make this decision so we can move on and keep things rolling. Um, and I'll be honest with you, uh, you know, the transparency sometimes takes a little getting used to. I mean, you saw in the example, I have Trello cards that have red dates on them, which are staring me in the face saying, why aren't you taking care of me? Um, a lot of those just need to have new due dates reassigned uh, because uh, the, the, the priority of those has, has come down a bit for whatever reason. And, uh, but just having access to that information has really been powerful for us. Um, a lot of great comments from Normandy's room. I like this one. If someone gets sick, the rest of the team can pick up and know what's already done. That's Just that one. coherency of where are we at with that? You don't have to call a meeting if it's just a simple, oh, we finished it. We just need to ship it. Like we don't have to meet to realize that. Yeah, that's a really good one. We've been using, so we've been using the uh, free version uh, for quite some time now, and we love it. And for a lot of the same reasons, we love Slack. Uh, you know, it works everywhere. Uh, you, you know, the, the fact that uh, it notifies us when things happen uh, via email or via Slack or via however I decide I want to be notified, whatever I'm comfortable with. And it's just great knowing, you know, new cards are done, car due dates are being assigned, things are getting done. It's almost a warm, fuzzy feeling sometimes to see those sort of notifications. It's a great visual representation of what we're doing and how busy we are. Uh, you know, we frequently have things where we say, hey, we really should tackle this. You pull that calendar open and you say, okay, great. June is a good time for that, as opposed to trying to cram everything into that proverbial two weeks from now, which I think we're, we're, we're all sort of uh, comfortable with. Um, it's much easier to stay on top of everything we do. And I'm using it that we on purpose because... Um, you may have a, um, some members of your team that are very good at staying up on top of tasks, but may not know that other members of the team are struggling or behind. This gives you that opportunity to say, hey, we can, we can pull together and help this person get through this uh, particular um, block and, and move on to being uh, productive. 
But the bottom line is, is Trello is a task management tool people want to use. We find the metaphor, the dragging of the of the sticky notes, um, I'm using air quotes, you can't see, uh, dragging them back and forth between the lists. It's very fast. It's very responsive. And the same thing with Slack is once you get people up and running with it, they just simply don't find it a task to have to do. It just quickly becomes something they're just doing. So additional information on is available at that website that's on your handout as far as how do you get a, a Trello boards up and running um, and, and those sort of things. And again, I want to emphasize, make sure you take a look at that record retention thing, um, that policy uh, link as well. Um, we've got a, a, a brief time here at the end for some closing remarks. And uh, so the comment sort of came up early in the Slack part of the presentation about how some people are resistant uh, to change. And this, I mean, this is one of the oldest stories of all time, that something new comes along and some people are like, woohoo, let's try the new thing. And some people are like, I don't want to change anything. Why do I have to change? And uh, I think that's an important conversation that every organization um, needs to foster among their ranks. Um, you know, do we step back sometimes and think about the way we work? Um, with Slack and Trello, it wasn't always possible to work this way. Email was really the best option for a long time. Um, you know, it's really the past five, maybe 10 years, if you're generous, that some of these collaborative tools kind of came into their own and got good enough for anyone to use and not just techies. And uh, now that we have these really cool tools, um, it's up to us to really think and be smart and also be inclusive and conversational about using them strategically and figuring out where they're good to use and, you know, where their limits are. And, you know, we aren't jumping on Slack and Trello like these are now the only two things we use forever for everything. Like that's just as, you know, narrow minded as saying email is the only tool for everything. And uh, we really try to do that as a team and as, as a culture to try to expand and then really take the time to be strategic and smart. The, the good news with Slack and Trello is the barrier for entry is very low. Um, and Travis, you want to talk a little bit about well, that? Well, I, I think it's one of those things where I've heard before that from a communication standpoint, whether it was when email came along or we're, we're doing things with blogs or or RSS feeds or, you know, whatever it might be is that, well, we're doing just fine. It's not as though anybody's asking for this sort of thing. We're getting along with whatever it is we're doing. And I think it's the old uh, Henry Ford line where he would have built a faster horse if he just did what people had asked. So sometimes you have to take a step out. And the good news is with these is that step can be a short one. Slack, you're up and running at no cost and, and you're, you're experiencing some of these benefits almost immediately and you can scale into them. Same thing with Trello. If you just want to use Trello for your own personal tasks, you will find a lot of benefits just using it on your own. So it's not as though there has to be these gigantic investments for you to start to, you know, to dabble in them a little bit and say, hey, you know what, maybe we should scale this up to two or three people, or maybe we should go from two or three to five or six. I mean, I've used Trello just as a grocery list. It's nice when I get to the store and it's like, ah, oh, I left my list at home. Actually, my list is everywhere, always. And shared. Uh, the wife and I can both add items to the list. Yeah, my wife stays home, but she thinks of something else we need. She adds it to the list after I've already left. Like, you know, that's a personal life example, but, you know, just use your imagination You and some of the benefits are pretty clear. But I really, I, I think it, it, it means that you have to be committed. And I think that's one of the things that we did here is we said, look, when it comes to managing tasks, we're going to use Trello. That's what we're going to use. We're create a board. Everybody's on that board. And if um, if Mike uh, s calls me on the phone and says, hey, we need to do this, my response to him is go add a card to Trello. Things aren't going to get done unless they're in Trello. And we really had to make that commitment and jump in with both feet once we decided that it was going to be a team thing. So those are some of our reflections that, you know, we really are sensitive to the fact that this is not just feature lists and apps and apps and phones and computers. This is really a question of how do you want to work? How do you want to work with other people? And uh, we, we found some great benefits to being open to tools like Slack and Trello, but we would encourage you to do the same in your context. Um, 
maybe you're already ahead of us. You're already doing lots of great collaboration and we have, we probably have things to learn from you, but really I think that that conversation is one of the most important things I would put out there. So that, uh, uh, concludes our agenda for today. Um, again, if you have any additional questions, but feel free to share those with your local organizers. Uh, they'll pass those along to us. Um, we will um, send us a summary email um, to you all within a week or so with some uh, additional points, some uh, responses to these questions. Other than that, I want to make sure that anybody um, who is um, in the room has signed the attendance sheets, but I'll kind of let the, peop the local people there uh, walk you through that process. Thank you so much for attending, and we, we hope you found it valuable. Thanks again.